one of the things that's unfamiliar for many teach music teaching artists when they work with young people is the habit of getting many ideas in the air before you start making choices. We're so speedy in schools and uh, even in society, we want to get our first idea and go with that. Actually, psychologists call that satisficing, which is to accept the first plausible solution to a problem that comes along. And satisficing is fine, except psychologists tell us it completely eliminates the possibility of significant creative accomplishment, which is not so good in the arts. So part of our process is to nurture brainstorming in our participants, to get them to generate more than just that first good idea, a second, a third, a fourth one that's not so good, and then a fifth one that's really good. Uh, there was this little bit of research that I came across not too long ago that really exemplifies this. It was a ceramics teacher, and he got tired of teaching his ceramics class at the college level the same way every time. So this one year, he divided the classroom in exact half, and in this half of the room, he had all the students do their stuff around the ceramics tables, same thing over here, but he made one difference in the way they were going to be graded, and he told them this. So he said, over to this side of the room, you're going to be graded according to how much stuff you produce. If you produce 50 pounds of pots, you get an A. 40 pounds, you get a B. Over on this side, you're going to be graded according to your single best pot. You're going to give me your best piece of work at the end of the term, and I will give you a grade according to that. Then he taught the class, and they did what they did for all these years, get to the end of the semester, and he takes two pots from every student and gives them to an independent panel of pot experts, or I guess ceramic experts, and to judge which is the best work that happened in the class. 18 of the 20 best pots from that class appeared in one side of that classroom. He did the same experiment the subject, subsequent year. 18 of the 20 best pots came from the same side of the classroom. Which side do you think it came from? It came from this side of the classroom. And he said, if you looked at the different sides, he said, over on this side, they're having a great time. They're laughing, and they're making pots that explode, and they're talking a lot, and their hands are on clay, working in the material all the time, experimenting, talking, reflecting. Over here, they're very serious. A lot of thinking going on before hands touch clay. Very much cautious behavior with each piece because there's so much at stake. No talking. The multiplicity of ideas, the playful atmosphere, the mutual supportiveness that came up in the atmosphere of play, and the multiple ideas that came up produced better artwork. Now what's poignant here is any administrator walk walking by that classroom wants this side of the classroom, not this one. Over here, they are seriously on task. They're really paying hard attention. Everything over here is good, whereas the chaos over on this side of the, look at these ridiculous things that they're doing. All the talking, all the goofing around, and the better artwork comes from this side of the room, not to mention the happier people. So the reminder for the music teaching artist is, Provide those challenges that make people want to experiment in the medium. Not just settle for this first solution, but generate multiple possible solutions, things that you never would have thought of or they couldn't believe they ever thought of. That produces the better artwork in the final result and make it a tolerable amount of chaos so your partner teacher doesn't freak out. But don't feel that silent thinking and making single specific choices is what produces the best result.